Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I'm your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and in this show we're going to show you how to get information from a remote repository in Get using fetch and pull. So sit back and let the knowledge flow in because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to be talking about um, fetch and pull, um, two ways to get something down uh, from a, either a centralized remote repository or from another repository. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, I, I took the stuff that we had from test and I actually synced that with the central repository that you might have, uh, you might remember from another time. And we're going to go into test two. I'll, sh I'll show you how to um, actually push stuff to the central repository, but that's in the next video. So right now we're going into test two and we want to do a get fetch. So right away you see that uh, you know we have a lot of stuff that got updated. We have test, test two, and master. All those you know got created but in the background. And these are origin master, origin test. So origin is where we originally cloned from. So what I can do now is I'm in master and I have all this stuff. It's just in the background. So some of these haven't even be, been created yet. But what I can do is I can do a get um, merge origin master. And what this will do is merge the stuff that we've fetched into our current master. And this is very uh, important because uh, this is one way to do it. But another way to do it is uh, rather than doing a merge is we could do a pull. And actually what I'm going to do before I even go there is I'm going to go up one level and I'm going to do a copy of um, actually it's copy dash R I'm not sure if it's lowercase but we'll find out in a second test 2 to test 3 and just check that out alright just for the sake of doing a backup so I can show you both ways really easily so we have that fetch and as I was going to show you let's clear this let's do a get merge origin master and that merges in master from the repository based on our fetch so basically what we could have done um, even before that and actually I'll show you this in the other well let's do a get K just to show you that you know changes are same as you know in the other repository what I could have done going back here um, going into test three, which is our little backup, is I could have done something like get K and do origin master. So I'm actually passing in a branch to um, get K and looking at origin master. Now, what this will do is it'll actually allow me to look at that remote branch and see what's changed without me ever merging that in. So this is what's changed on that particular branch. I can look at all the history and see what changed before I merge it in, which can be very useful, you know, because it can prepare you for, like, do I want to merge this right now or, oh, crap, I see something changed and that's going to cause a merge conflict. I want to find this pers the person who's, you know, going to help me merge this or ask them to pull from me and resolve the merge conflict. So, you know, that was one way um, that you could do th stuff using uh, the fetch. Another way you can do this, which does kind of the fetch and merge in one uh, file swoop, is you could do a get pull, and we'll do 
dot dot slash central repository. So what this will do is it will actually do like a fetch and pull. Well, it kind of does a fetch. It it does the uh, pulling down of the objects and the merge, uh, but it doesn't actually update the indices which get fetch does. So, you know, sometimes you'll see uh, things in like get status that will look a little weird. If you ever see that, do a get fetch and a lot of those issues will just kind of go away. That's why I usually prefer the actual get fetch and merge rather than get pull. Uh, because also get pull will actually force you to do the merge immediately. And, you know, backing out of that is, you know, well, you can do it. And actually, I should show you that as well. But we'll just do um, the get pull right now. And, you know, if we go to get K, we'll be able to see that right here. And, you know, that's all fine. So now what I want to show you is, uh, and I didn't set up a good example of this, so I'm going to have to improvise a little, but let's, uh, hmm, what's the best way of doing this? Let's do a get GUI, and we'll show you how to uh, screw something up. Let's amend the last commit. Oh, actually, I can't do that. I need to uh, touch test 3.txt. And we're going to do a get GUI, and we'll show you why this is a, a problem. We're going to amend the last commit, which is already out in repository, and we're going to add another file. So we're going to commit that. And now we're going to preview something we're going to show you uh, actually in the next tutorial, but we're going to get push dot dot to uh the central repository and oh there's a problem uh actually it prevented me from doing this because uh gets i might gets k so we have nothing outstanding but we actually changed this so it's actually preventing us from even sending it up because it says it's a problem um so if we do a get pull again, um, dot dot slash central and merge made recursive. Well, actually, it merged it because you know it added another file. So let's see what that actually looks like. So, but. You know, it may it actually you know figured it out because you know get is actually kind of smart that way. It figured out oh you just added another file and that doesn't really conflict with anything, but it's different history, and it didn't really like that because you know we were trying to mess with it, but now it has that so we could actually push it now and we could pull that down. But let's. Uh, go to our test 2 and we're going to touch test 3.txt was that the file we use yes and we'll jet it test 3 txt and we'll just add some stuff we'll close that and we'll do a git GUI add that commit it ah should add good commit messages not test ones like that and now if we do a git um, we'll do a get fetch here instead and do a get merge origin master and merge made recursively because it could. Uh, damn. So let's see. 
But now we can do a get push dot dot slash um, central. So we push that change and let's go back to our other test. Test three and then we'll edit that test three dot txt. We'll add different stuff. So we'll actually get a merge conflict this time. Uh, sometimes it's hard to come up with the failing cases, but uh, now we'll do a get pull on this side, and we'll do dot dot slash central. And this time, local changes. Oh yes, we haven't made we haven't actually committed those. So get GUI, and actually. Pulling down could mess with those changes, and it knows that, so we'll actually commit these changes. And just clear this so you can see. And we'll pull again, and merge conflict. So now we have a merge conflict that we have to deal with right now, but say we don't want to. Say we want to you know, mess with whatever we have. We can do a get reset dash dash hard. So, and that reverts us right before we actually try to, you know, do that um, pull slash merge. So, that's the basics of um, pulling and actually pushing. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty much just going to skip the next tutorial and move on. So, that's pretty much all for now.